Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and we are live on a Friday afternoon, which means it is time to learn something. And today, what um, we've done, and I say we because um, Jody has put in uh, a lot of um, time and effort into this as well. We've put together another sort of group of things that you may want to think about in order to be prepared, not scared, uh, in the coming months. So uh, I'm hoping that you will find some value in that. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you probably are pretty prepared already, but we're going to do a series of these just so that you can keep thinking about them. Now, one of the things that I want to warn you about is I've noticed that this week it's been far more difficult for me to get um, a time online for my groceries to be delivered except for Walmart. So that's interesting. People seem to be doing this better. All right, so hold on one second. <laughs> Jody's just texting me. Let me just see. Where's my phone? <laughs> what have I done with my phone, people? There it is. Okay, that will help. So one second. Maybe Jody can let me know if she. I'll, I'll try and look at it in my own phone. Sometimes that helps, Jody. Just try it on one second. Okay, so it seems to be working on mine, Jody. so I hope it is now working on yours as well. Thank you for letting me know. All right, so, <laughs> well, I gather that you can see it, Isabel, so the problem that we thought was there <laughs> isn't there at all. All right, so uh, feel free to uh, tag along anybody. If you're new to the broadcast, let's make sure that you know a couple of things. Number one thing, welcome. Uh, we are an extended group, uh, extended family of people. We choose to be the extended family of one another. And in that, we support each other through thick and thin, uh, and we have done over the years. So if you're looking for an extended family, this is a good place to be. Some people actually have watched for years, and, you know, then... Um, you know, just joined in, so that was awesome. So, hi, Sandy. Good to see you as well. And, Isabel, it's always a pleasure to have you in the room. So, let me know if there's any subject in particular that you would like me to talk about, because that's a lot of the time um, I will just put it on the list, and then the next time I'm thinking, what shall I talk about, I'll go to the list. All right. So, first of all, uh, I want some updates, because we are an extended family, and that, to me, is more important than anything. Jody will let you guys know how she and Lionel are doing. For those of you who don't know, they um, lost Lionel's daddy um, who passed last week. And so, you know, they're dealing with the first week of grieving, which is pretty horrific. Um, I heard that Chloe got home. I heard that Jeannie and York um, got their new pump in and they're fine. Uh, Erin, I'm still waiting for an update. I'm waiting for an update from Lizzie because I thought she had um, a uh, surgery planned, but it was for the end of the month, and I'm wondering whether it's still going ahead. Kimmy uh, tells me that she got the test results back, and um, I'll be talking more about Kimmy towards the latter part of this broadcast because she, she got... Um, nearly scammed, except we were able to help her. So uh, I want to talk about scammers. It's one of the things that I want to warn you about. And um, she is seems to be doing fine. I'll keep check with her. Emma is home, for those of you who were 
uh, worried about Emma. She has managed to get home. Um, I'm waiting for an update. As far as I know, Lena is fine. That's the Brit's um, fiance. Um, she, her mom, uh, the last I heard, they were, you know, making her sit up and get fluids and do the right things. And I, as far as I know from Paul in Boston, he is fine as well. So those are the updates. If I've forgotten anybody, just uh, shout it out here so that I can add it. Today, we're going to be talking about being prepared in the pantry. We'll talk about what things to overstock in your pantry. We're going to talk about being prepared to hear sad news because it's very possible it will happen. And then the third thing, we're going to be prepared uh, for ripoffs. All right, so Jody's update is we are doing well, but having emotional moments. The obituary was posted today. Lionel and I want to thank everybody for reaching out with messages of support. We've gathered strength from them. Good. And by the way, part of the expect loss section, um, I asked um, Jody to give us some input as to what to say and what not to say, because you can be on, you know, uh, either end of that, having to give bad news or sad news or receiving it. And I think there needs to be more understanding on both sides. So we've got a pretty packed, um, <laughs> a pretty packed day today. So first of all, if you are new, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell that's there is there so that if you click it, it will give you warning anytime we're about to do a broadcast. For example, we do another one this evening, which is our laughter one where we, we hopefully will have a bunch of things to smile about. And then we do another one on Sunday afternoon, which is our Soul Sunday, where we just sort of calm things down a bit and just, you know, feel good. So that's the important stuff. Now then, the first thing I want you to be prepared for and not scared about is there will be inflation following this. Now, um, I, I was pretty sure that you've all heard the word, but I wondered if you know, um, I wonder if you know what inflation really means. So uh, some of you are probably saying money, it's going to cost us money. Yes, but this is, this is the definition of it. Infl inflation can occur when the prices rise due to increases in production costs, such as raw materials and wages. A surge in demand for products and services can also cause inflation as consumers are willing to pay more for the product. How many of you are going, there has already been a surge in demand? And it's on things like toilet paper. All right. So what I don't want you to get caught up on is when after this pandemic has quietened down, um, people are still going to be surprised at the way the prices rise. So what we did is we put together some ideas for you. Number one, be prepared for the prices to go way up. You see, if you're prepared for that in your mind, you won't be shocked by it and you won't be scared by it. You'll go, oh, yeah, we're, we're ready for that. We knew about that. Do you understand the difference? It won't be dramatic for you. It'll be not if, but when. All right. All right, so Jody's saying they're also seeing a surge on eggs and meat here. Now, my attitude is that's what I want you to be prepared for. So, um, Jody, could you do me a favor and remind me to add powdered eggs to my list when I give it? That's a really good thing. I hadn't thought about eggs. All right, that's a really good one. And I'll add it to the list. So everything will be more expensive. Expect that. Be prepared for that. When you shop now, upsize anything that you can that is, a, a, you know, a thing that will last. For example, if you're going to buy shampoo, don't buy the little one, buy the big one. Why? This will, the second half will save you a lot of money because when you go to rebuy it, it's going to be more expensive. And so if you can afford to get the bigger one, and quite honestly, it isn't twice the price you'll be paying now, but it will be twice the price 
minimum that you'll be paying six months from now. So that's what I want you to think out, think about, right? Get big rather than the small one. If you normally buy the small one, get the big one. If you buy a small hairspray, get the very big one. Right? You know, think about that because it will help you save money. By the way, for those of you who don't know, please make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook is where we keep everybody updated to what's happening to the extended family. If I get any updates from anybody, people send me updates, I will put it on Facebook. And I put warnings that we're going to be doing broadcasts on both Facebook and Twitter. By the way, Julie, if you happen to hear this uh, broadcast, I hope you had a wonderful anniversary yesterday. And uh, we, we hope that it went well. Let us know if you did. So. We're going to be talking after this section about um, grieving, but I just want to move that slide down for a second because first thing, <laughs> it doesn't want to go down, does it? Hang on a second. <laughs> Guess whose internet has decided to have a little moment here? Hang on a second. I'm sure I'll be able to get there in a moment. I just need my pokey stick. Maybe that will help. Come on. Okay. I'm going to do it on my phone rather than on there then. You will not. I will make a plan. <laughs> You know, this is like, really, don't do this to me. Okay. So we did inflation, start over buying. Oh. Okay, I've moved it down a bit there. All right, so here's some things you might want to overbuy. Overbuy on flour, all right? I would say you know how much flour you use. Just as a matter of interest, how often do you buy flour at the moment? Now, flour is not an expensive commodity. I mean, every, every dollar is a problem. I understand that, especially... Um, but if you are capable of doing so, buy enough flour. In other words, if you normally buy flour once a month, start buying it once a week, just so that you can get the shelves stocked up a bit. Flour is a pretty long-lasting commodity to have. Um, I actually have bought a sack of rice. I don't mean a dirty great sack. I mean a sack about this big uh, of rice. All right? Um, and rice you know, is, is a commodity that's going to last a long time. Think about oats. Why? Oats is very good. You can use it for, um, you know, e eating oatmeal. You can use it for making a uh, cobbler on top of fruit, if you're lucky enough to have it. Um, but you can also use it as a flour. So think about oats. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I have a, you know, enough oats in the house as well. And if you like quinoa, uh, I think I got two packets of quinoa in the house at the moment. I normally would not buy a second one until the first one was about three quarters gone. But, you know, I'm starting to stock that as well. Think pasta type things. All right. So get an extra box of spaghetti or two. Buy a couple of boxes of lasagna. Um, think about rice noodles. I had rice noodles. I, I'm busy doing little experiments with uh, things that are easy to cook with very little meat. And for example, last night I took, I think, about three slices of a steak that I had, and I chopped them up into fairly small pieces, probably, you know, that big, and dropped them in a casserole dish. Um, 
I threw in some minestrone soup that I'd made that I blended. I threw that in. I threw in um, a portion of rice noodles and then chopped that up with um, fresh vegetables that I happened to have. And I just cooked it at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I have to remember which is which. That was Fahrenheit, right? So 250 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, about three quarters of an hour. Um, so, you know, yes, Jody's saying the lasagna noodles, there are plenty of them. So buy them, right? If they, if, you know, if you can get them, because what I'm saying is, you know, you can take lasagna noodles and break them up. You can take lasagna noodles put them in water, soften them, and then cut them into spaghetti noodles. You know, think about this. It's all the same stuff, all right? It's just a different way of producing it. So uh, I would definitely say th think spaghetti, lasagna, rice noodles, and macaroni. For those of you who can't live without your macaroni cheese, think about getting powdered cheese, all right? Because I think, Jody, could you remind me to add that to the list as well? powdered cheese if necessary, because I think that's what Kraft makes their mac and cheese from. So if it's good enough for our children, <laughs> it's probably okay for us too. Um, coffee. This is a big thing. One of the things that they noticed during their war years was, you know, coffee, you basically couldn't get it. And it was like a huge trading commodity. You know, people would do anything to get a cup of coffee, a decent cup. Now, Two things that I would recommend on um, coffee. Number one, buy up uh, as much as you can, obviously, of the beans that you love most. I've learned through being retired that I can mix my high-quality beans with some medium-quality ones together, and it makes a really nice taste anyway. But what you're also going to think about is you probably won't be able to keep buying coffee for quite a while because it'll get so expensive. So then think instant coffee. Now, I grew up on instant coffee in England. I mean, we just didn't have, when I grew up, we just didn't have, you know, the Starbucks and everything, obviously. So I grew up on instant coffee. And we only had real coffee if we had Yes. And, you know, I lived in the equivalent of a miniature Downton Abbey. So it wasn't that we couldn't afford real coffee. It's just something that you didn't have uh, in that time. So you only had it when, you know, you had guests. And then you normally had it in a demi tasse, which is, you know, a cup about this big. So think about that. All right. Where are we here? Um, hold on. amazing how I've managed to get all this messed up. There we go. So think milk. All right. How many of you have already got maybe some condensed milk uh, in your life? So think about getting a bit more. As I said, I have also got condensed, what was I, what did I find? Condensed coconut milk, I think. I even found condensed coconut or panned coconut cream. I've never heard of that, but I'm willing to try it. In a, I want to tell you, if you're without anything, you'll try almost anything. So um, the big deal that I did this week, hang on a second, where did I put it? Um, and th Jody, I've got to thank you for this. I really didn't know that you could get dry whole milk. I bought a box of 12 of these. And each one of these will be the equivalent of a gallon. Um, or four liters in English. <laughs> you know, non-American people. Yeah, this is about four liters worth it will make. But... I'm going to use that for cooking and stuff if I need to. All right. So thank you, Jody. I really didn't know you could get it. And I got this from a company in Winnipeg. 
That's in Canada. <laughs> but I'm sure that you've got your version. So thank you so much, honey. I appreciate it. The other thing I thought you might want to think about, how many of you like cream um, or ice cream or stuff like that? You know, you don't want to be, you know, there's a limit to how much you're going to put in your freezer. And, you know, also you've got to think if, the, if you had a power failure and you lost everything in your freezer, will you still have food? So I've actually started buying, um, it's too far back, I can't reach it, Dream Whip. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? It's the powdered stuff that you put, you know, uh, milk in and a little bit of vanilla. And it's really wonderful. Um, I thought I had some made up, but what I do is I just make it up and I just take a spoonful and put it on my um, whatever dessert I allow myself to have. So think about that, all right? Powdered whipping cream that isn't. Now, I'm also pre-diabetic and it's really, I have it every evening and, um, you know, I allow myself a small dessert every evening and I just put a, a dollop. That's a well-known measurement, a dollop. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a cheetah's idea of a tablespoon. It's a lot more than a tablespoon. Yeah. So that's what it is. Um, now then, how many of you got some other ideas of things that we might get be able to get in either powdered or canned that we haven't covered? Now, the main reason to get it powdered or canned is it can last you the rest of your life. I thought we talked about that last week, Jody, that we any canned meats, any canned, but yes, good, good point. Let's add it again. Uh, any canned meats, um, or maybe I just forgot to read it. Canned meats, canned chicken, canned tuna, canned shrimp, canned anything you can. Yep. So do you understand that? Don't forget the fish products if you are uh, somebody that enjoys fish products. And quite honestly, they are normally pretty cheap to buy. And I'm not saying, you know, buy enough for a year. But, you know, if you've got maybe three of each, uh, you'll be grateful for it. You know, if, if the price of meat goes soaring up, you will be pretty grateful for it. Now, remember what I was saying, think complex meals. When I say complex meals in as much as, you know, a little bit of even half a can of, of shredded chicken with a lot of other things mixed in, you know, is going to make quite a substantial meal. You know, you can make a, a you know, a, a salad with it, you know, a, a, like an egg salad or something. Um, but a chicken and egg salad or, or, or a, you know, a tuna and egg salad, anything like that. Powdered peanut butter. No, add it to my list, please, Jody. Um, I, I, I'd forgotten that you can buy that. Peanut butter lasts pretty well, though, Jody. Am I correct in that? It is almond butter that you need to put in the fridge. Peanut butter, you, you don't have to put in the fridge even when you've opened it. Am I correct in that? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, so, and by the way, for everybody wanting to know who Jody is, she's our admin. She she basically runs the show. I, I'm just the mouth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now I want to know, can any of you think of any other things that we ought to have on that list that we haven't? Okay, so Jody's saying, yes, peanut butter lasts, but thinking about availability. Yes, so therefore, if you normally buy a small one, buy the biggest one you can. Can, right? Uh, that would be another thing. If you normally buy, a, you know, a sort of, I think they come small, medium, and large, right? So if you can get a bulk size one, get one now while you can, because it will save you money um, uh, eventually, all right? Jody's saying, Sal makes me look good. <laughs> She's a joy to work with. Yeah, right. Um, so 
think about that, all right? Think about what can I get? If I'm buying steak today, then let me think about also buying one can of maybe prime steak and vegetable hearty soup, all right? That's how I double up, all right? For every, all right, so, you know, one of these type things. I'm not getting paid, just so you know, but one of these type ones. Why? I could make four meals out of this can if I needed to, right? A little bit of a pasta, um, you know, with, with maybe some onions sprinkled over the top, you know, um, or French's onions. Yeah, those are good, aren't they? Yeah, these things. I'm not getting paid, people. Um, you know, that would be really nice as well. And I'm not sure what the shelf life is of these, but I think it's a pretty long time. Well, it is in my house. <laughs> How many of you relate to that? <laughs> in my house, the best before date is, are they still good? Um, so think about that. All right. So we've covered, I think, most of the things. Oh, stock. Did I miss a whole lot of things? Because stock was definitely on the list. Thank you, Jody. As was meat. So where did I miss it? Hang on. Obviously, Jody knows where it is because she said it. Coffee. Oh, Mr. Whole Thing. Here we go, people. Thank you, Jody. Duh. Cheese. Uh, I'm going to get to the bouillon type things in a second. Um, all right, so think about cheese. If possible, buy your cheese in rounds. You know, really upsize it. Um, because a round on its own, until you open it, will last a long time. All right? Uh, if you can, buy cheese that has got wax over it. Think. Um, think these things. Buy these if you can, or similar. Anything that's got wax over it will means it will last much longer. Um, think about, uh, for example, I found that you in my supermarket, uh, you could buy a round of brie cheese for ten bucks, or you could buy a slice for six. You know, it's just like, duh. <laughs> I always buy the round and then I cut it up and I freeze it. So, but I, now you, you understand that once you cut it, you've got to be able to freeze things. So you need room. Maybe get a new freezer. Honey. Okay, so let's just go back a step here. So any meat in a can is a good buy at the moment. Corned beef, spam, Vienna sausages, you know, the cocktail sausage type things. I love those. Uh, so any meat, chicken, or fish in a can is a good buy. You will not waste your money because it will last for a long, long time. Honey, raw lasts centuries. Raw honey lasts for centuries. Now, what you're saying is, yes, yeah, Sal, but it crystallizes. Okay. <laughs> so put it in, take the lid off, obviously, because that's metal, but take the lid off and put it in the microwave and just warm it up, people. And then it'll be all liquid again. <laughs> yeah, it's possible to do. Or don't put it in the fridge to start with or anything else. Actually, I've got raw honey. Um, yeah. Actually, even out of the fridge, uh, this is some real raw honey that uh, Marnie gave me for Christmas, and it's crystallized. But whenever I want some more, I just take the lid off, put it in the microwave, and warm it up. So good to know. Right, Jody, thank you. Chickens and beef stock or vegetable stock. If you can buy chicken, beef, or vegetable stock, um, I'm thinking you've got choices here. Jody is saying, you know, don't buy the cartons. No, I never do anyway. She's saying better than bouillon. Now, um, 
Jodie, you're probably not surprised. I do actually have that, just so people can know what it looks like. Uh, I do actually have that, but I wouldn't even recognize. Uh, maybe, yes, you can store it if you haven't opened it. Once I've opened it, I put it in the fridge. Would that be right? But they make a, a chicken one, a turkey one, um, and a beef one, probably. I think that's all I've seen. Um, but yes, absolutely. However, for those of you who grew up in England, I'm thinking, where have I got it hidden? Mm, okay, probably deeply hidden. You probably have a chicken stock um, that is dry. <laughs> I can't find it. You, you gather my grocery cupboard is right here. Um, but, you know, it's, I think it's called Nor, starting with a K. Um, so, hi, Aaron. Aaron, we need an update if you can, honey. And Linda, so great to see you. Yes, buy the bouillon cubes. Exactly. So, buy the cubes, and Nor makes the cubes as well as the dry mixture. So just make sure you've got that. Uh, how many of you? Um, how many of you use Bisto? Oh, Bisto, right? Um, okay, I don't have the package, but Bisto is what I use for making uh, gravies. But also, if you add anything to your gravies, and I think I will be doing a lot of cooking of, of stews and things to save on meat. Um, I also add a spoon of Marmite in if I'm doing anything to do with beef or pork, because it just gives it such a great taste. Some of you south of the equator probably use Vegemite, but most of us who grew up in England, Marmite with crunchy peanut butter mixed up together. I have never heard of that. I will try that. I've, I don't think I've got crunchy. <laughs> All right, so I think I've got three of these on hand. Oh, my allergies are playing up. One, I can see one. Two, three, yeah, I think I've got, I've just opened this one. Uh, and I've just uh, got three more after this. So that should last any apocalypse, I reckon. It's new as in a jar sold everywhere in it's very Moorish, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what Moorish is. <laughs> By the way, I love Marmite on apples, on yeah. I, I make Marmite butter. I take some butter and just put a some Marmite in it and mix it up and then spread it over my crackers. Very good. All right, so think anything that will make things tasty. You know, uh, I am busy, as you know, um, growing herbs and drying them. Or oh, actually, I'm using them fresh at the moment, but I'm making sure that every time I uh, make them, I also dry some. So that is exciting for me. Soups. Think about soups, not as soups, but as sauces. For example, how many of you have ever cooked um, chicken and then just poured a can of mushroom soup? condensed mushroom soup over the top of it and pretended that you slaved over the, you know, the oven for a long time. <laughs> I still think, I can, I can remember going to some guy's house for dinner and we had pork and mushroom and, and, and mushroom sauce. And I said, boy, I got to get the recipe for this. This is so good. And he, just, he eventually confessed to me that he just put a can of mushroom soup over the top. So think exciting soups as well. You know, they make some really good soups. Um, not just the plain um, cream soups. Okay, so Erin is asking for thoughts and prayers. Just get this here. Hang on, I'm just going back. I just want to do an update on Erin for a second.
Before I do, I just wanted to remind you all that we do have all those Soul Sunday um, broadcasts put together. If you're having trouble sleeping because you're stressed, think about turning on the playlist so that it can just lull you to sleep. So, you know, it's quite honestly, if you're feeling stressed or whatever, or you just want to calm down a bit while you're doing stuff, you know, think about putting your earbuds in and just listening to them. All right, so Erin has requested thoughts and prayers. She broke out in a rash on her arms and legs and is having an increase in muscle spasms. They are trying to narrow down what's causing the rash. Her doctor's appointment was canceled due to lockdown. Huh. Okay, thank you. And I see that Jody actually put that up before, uh, as we started the um, broadcast. All right, thank you, guys. No, no, Erin, we got it. Thank you, honey. It's my bad. I didn't see that Jody had already sent it to me. So she is wonderful, isn't she? Yep, we think so, too. All right, so uh, anything else that you can think of in the pantry? Uh, if I've left anything out and you're watching this on the replay and going, but why haven't you added this? Put it in the comments below because I will then add it to my master list. And so if anybody wants it, uh, I'm... Actually, I was going to put it up on my Facebook, no, on my Dear Mama Sal .com, and my website. What do you think? Would you like that shopping list so you can keep checking it? Make sure you've got what you need. The other thing, I, I just, anything that you buy, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking about that, you know, if it's shampoo, if it's deodorant, if you've got a chance of upsizing it, do it. Okay, now then, the next thing that I want to talk about, and it's not an easy thing to talk about. All right, so <laughs> Jodie's so good, isn't she? She's already put up the Soul Sunday um, uh, what do you call it? Link. Jody, can you remind me to put it in the um, notes below as well? All right. So, yeah. Sandy's saying, what about spices? Yes. I don't know about you, but spices, I've got way too much anyway. I've probably got enough to last me until, um, you know, so they're going to be throwing it away after I've gone spice. But yes, if you use a lot of spices, I would not go mad on those, though, because quite honestly, a little does go a long way. How many of you, you know, have got way too many spices for the amount that you use? I think upsize the ones that you use a lot. All right. But that, you know, in other words, if you use lemon pepper uh, a lot, you know, upsize it. Uh, I do have... I just because um, I use them. So this is, I was buying bulk um, lemon pepper. Now I don't use very much because of the salt intake. I, you know, it bothers me. But I also have bought uh, bulk uh, sea salt. Now I wouldn't be buying bulk anymore, quite honestly. I think I'd be buying packaged. Uh, all right. So yeast is a good one. Yes. Thank you, Jody. Could you add it to my list, please? All right. So Jody thinks that she's having an allergic reaction to something. Yeah, it's very possible. Might be anything, right? It could be that they've changed the detergent that they're washing your sheets in. All right. Now, Linda, making your own yeast is really interesting and easy. And I want you to think, <laughs> Linda, I want you to think <laughs> that the pioneers going across America or Canada or wherever, you know, they did not have the ability to pop into the store and pick up some yeast. Make sense? So when you realize that, you realize it must be possible 
to make it. And it's really easy. Do you want to know how to do it? This is if you can't get it. I'm, I'm not, I mean, obviously, do the cheat. Do the easy way if you can. Okay. Okay, do you like to have multi-grain bread or regular bread? Okay, I'll, while I'm waiting for the answer. All right, this is what I do. It's not the right way. Since when do I do the right way of anything? But this is some cheese and a multigrain bread. And you can see, all right? And you can see it's doing a great job. Yes, I'm also pre-diabetic. Um, and so what I use, Linda, seeing as you asked me, I use some almond flour to replace place a uh, normal flour, normally about uh, yeah well you'd have to look that up I'm certain there are recipes okay but this is made without store-bought cheese um, stuff so what I do is I take this is multigrain Okay, so all I do is, um, you can see that it's stringy. We like it when it's stringy. So what you do is you just take, when I go to make something, I take this bit out and put it into the container where I want to make, for example, this. Um, so you take about half out, leaving half in, because the half that's left in then becomes the yeast for your next bit, all right? So this is my yeast for, for whatever I want to cook. And then what's left in is the yeast starter when I top it up again. So I would use that little bit and then just add, um, what do I use in my multigrain? I use whole flour, I use rye flour, and I use almond flour. All right, and that's my cheese almond flour bread for, to, for this weekend. Now, I do all sorts of things wrong. You know that. But it works for me. <laughs> they say that you should take um, half of this out every day. Uh, in other words, it's an ongoing starter. How do you start it? Okay, that's the only thing that's getting it started. So all you do is put in a little bit of whatever flowers you want. You know, if you want, oh, I also put nine grain in here. Sorry, Linda. So I put nine grain and then add extra almond and then extra whole wheat and extra rye and then this, some white flour as well. And just mix it up with some water, all right? until it's sort of like porridge. I think porridge would make sense to Linda. That would be oatmeal for those of you who live in North America. All right, so Linda, it's just like porridge, right? It's a bit slushy. And then add just a little bit more. Um, in other words, porridge actually, what I'm calling you know, thick porridge, not thin. Yes, the reason I put the almond flour in is to reduce the, plus, I've got cheese in mine, remember. <laughs> that also helps reduce the insulin spike. Okay, so I just mix that up, and I work really hard after that. I put the lid on a mason jar, but not tightly. I put it so that it's still loose. Why? Because this will start to ferment, and as it ferments, it's pushing air up, and you need to have that air release. Does that make sense, Linda? Now, when you 
first do it, you need to sort of feed it uh, a little bit every day, all right? And just keep adding a little bit of flour, a little bit of water. And once it starts sort of looking what I call stringy, did you see how that was? Can you see? I don't know if you can see that, Linda. Can you see it's stringy? Once it starts sticking sort of in a stringy sort of way, then you know, then I know, anyway, it works for me that it's okay to use. But, you know, just keep trying it if it doesn't work. And um, by the way, do you have any, um, do you have any yeast at the moment? Because it's a really, you know, if you really want a quick start, I, I'd literally take a pinch of uh, real yeast and just throw it in. None. Okay. So try it. Plenty, plenty of things online on it, Linda. Scads of, um, of videos. All right. Now, Erin's saying, oh, she, we're going back to Erin's rash. She said, exactly, they've recently changed the detergent. So now they're starting to use the old, yeah, the old detergent just on your stuff. If you're the only one person on the planet that's allergic to it. Yeah, I quite agree. Okay, good. Got flour and baking powder. Good. By the way, if you want to guarantee that your bread rises up, throw an egg in there. <laughs> study, study the Chinese bread making system. It begins with a T. I've got a video on it, Linda. Jody, can you remind me to send Linda the link to that Chinese making bread system? <laughs> but the first thing is to get what they call the starter. Once you've got the starter, you don't need to worry about yeast again. As long as every time you use it, um, then fill it up again. You want a cheese bread video. Okay, right, right. Listen, I'm not, I got so much video, I just haven't got the stuff edited. All right. So, by the way, talking about that, how many of you enjoyed the quick thought of the day video? I'm thinking about trying to get that incorporated. And so, Jody, um, especially when we do this evening or Soul Sunday, I really would like that sort of um, clip of the day uh, of the videos. If you can sort of go, okay, that, that would fit into a minute. I haven't done it yet, Jody. I haven't made the cheese bread yet <laughs> on, with the video. But I will. Oh, the oh yes, for the um, the car one. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Now then, we're going to move on to a different subject. Let me just put these back in the fridge. By the way, Linda, I just I've got a feeling you're not a perfectionist, right? From all that I know of you. <laughs> Sandy saying, yeah, she watched the video and sent her husband out to go start the car. I was too late, Sandy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I just want to double check with Linda. No, she's not a perfectionist. Okay, so what I do is I literally put it in there, loose top. Remember that, Linda, really important loose top. Put it in the fridge. Now, they say that you need to separate it every day and add a bit more and do this, that, the other. I don't do that. By the way, this is sourdough. Right? This is sourdough. And sourdough, Jody will tell you, is much better. All right? Is much better at keeping this the the spike down. Did you know that? You probably did. Linda. But you know, so if your husband is uh, insulin dependent. Sado will, you, you, first of all, he shouldn't be eating carbs. We know that. Um, but if he does have it, if he does want bread, uh, sado. By the way, I make cheese sticks out of cheese. What do you call them? Yeah, bread sticks out of this. I will take it and twirl it around and then just cook it and give myself a treat. 
Ah, where did I learn that from, Jody? So, Linda, what I want you to understand is that bread making is a an art. It is not perfection, and I think you'll find most people who make their own bread um, just know what it looks like, what it feels like. You know, they, they've got the right idea, all right, and they get that by doing it a lot. Rye flour is difficult to get. Right, so use, you know what I would use, Sandy, is I would just use, um, I would, if you, if you can find nine grain or something, I'd put it in the blender, make it into a flour, and use that with a little bit of white flour. It'll have rye in it. You can, you can use, make a starter just using white flour, you know that. You're lucky um, that you've got a food. I'm, I'm finding it difficult to get my food delivered now. But do you know what I found out that in Canada now, <laughs> there's a reason why I love Canada, many reasons, but in Canada now we have a senior helpline. Um, for those of you who might watch this that are in Canada, I don't know if you knew this, but if you dial 211, the government has set up a senior helpline. In other words, if you need groceries and you don't want to go to the store, um, you can give a volunteer your shopping list and they will go and pick it up for you. How about that? They match you up with volunteers in your area. I think that's a wonderful service. And I probably, if I have problem getting a slot to have mine delivered for next week, I will use the system. So, good thinking about that. I want to go on to the next subject, which is you be prepared to hear bad news. Right. Be prepared. I'm sorry, I'm busy reading. Jody's saying the needy homesteader has great sourdough starter on YouTube. Yes. What I'm trying to tell Linda, though, is Linda, once you've got the starter made, you know, don't worry. You can just tuck it in. You know what I mean? <laughs> I find that I'm not that perfectionist about it. So if you're going, I'll never do that every day, don't. Yeah. Try doing it twice a week, you know, see how it works. You know, um, I, quite honestly, I only make bread once a week and I break all the rules and it works for me. The other thing is, Linda, really good trick <laughs> if you're making bread, really good trick. I make mine and I take, you know what I had in the jar there? I will take that and put it on uh, my... Breadboard, <laughs> I was trying to think of the name, on my breadboard and I roll it, all right? I keep adding a little bit of flour and roll it until it's not sticky, all right? Once it's not sticky, I know it's good. And then I keep rolling it. You know, I turn it over itself and I roll it. And I turn it over itself and I roll it. It's way better than kneading. <laughs> I just don't do the getting my hands that dirty well. Um, and so just you know, treat it like pastry. And then once you've done that quite a bit, uh, I do it about five, six times, then I just put it in a casserole dish with the lid on and let it rise. It's really well for me. <laughs> so watch the movies to find out how it should happen and then do your own version. You can do this, Linda. You've done everything else we've helped you. So back to the stuff. Be prepared to hear bad news, okay? As you heard, uh, sadly, Jody's husband, Lionel, um, his father passed last week. And I thought this would be a very magical time 
um, for us to take their experience and work with it. All right? Um, take their experience and work with it. So, in other words, be prepared to hear bad news. You know, what are the chances of somebody that you know is going to catch this thing? Pretty good. Well, actually, no. Yeah. Um, but then also realize that as far as I've done the math so far, less than 2% are dying from it of the people who catch it in the first place. So be prepared to hear that some of your friends have got it. All right. Be prepared for that. Then you won't be scared for that. Then make sure you keep up to date. I'm going to keep updating you as best I can on the map. All right. Because I think when you realize that only, you know, 1.2% of the people who get it die from it, that sort of narrows it down to quite, you know, it's not everybody. It'd still be a lot of people, but it's not everybody. All right. And so uh, that's what I want you to concentrate on. So what I want us all to do is to be prepared and realize that being prepared for sad news is being realistic. All right? In your life generally, you should be prepared to hear sad news. How many of you agree with me? It doesn't mean you have to freak out. It doesn't mean um, it's just that. Look at that. Linda's saying that she just has an 87-year-old who just made it through. All right. So just because you're over 80, just because I am 72 with a history of lung problems does not mean that I'm going to die from it. You know, what it means is that if I, I need to be pretty careful. And by the way, I need to go to the bank on Monday. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be pretty careful. <laughs> but I, I can only be as careful as I can be. So let's take some of what we learned. Okay. We all know that there are stages of grief, right? Hang on. Just going to get the, the whiteboard down. Jody, what I wanted to ask you is, would it be fair to say that when you – are in that first week of grief, you're not even hearing what people are saying very well. Actually, you've done a great job of listening to me, but I mean, other than that, you know what I'm saying? That that really, you're in a fog, uh, uh, sort of. So we know, because we talk about it a lot, that we've got the denial, I can't believe I just heard that, can't be on Frida, okay? Or it might be... Um, by the way, they add isolation in there, but uh, and then you've got anger, normally at God. How can he let that happen? Then you've got bargaining. You know, this is sort of like, listen, if you let her recover, I will go to church every week for the next year, the rest of my life. Um, then normally a level of depression. Okay, and eventually around here you get to acceptance. And when you get to acceptance, you can start slowly getting on with your life. By the way, we know that this rockets backwards and forwards. You'll think you've got all the way to acceptance and suddenly you're back in denial again. It happens. And that's what grieving is. It's sorting out. If you can imagine... Um, because that's the only way it ever made sense to me when I tried to describe it to people. It is the librarian in your head trying to refile everything, all right? And that's why it keeps going backwards and forwards. Yeah, Jody is saying... All right, so Linda's going off to uh, Linda. We're doing a section about getting scammed after this, so please, if you can, make sure you hear that as well. Absolutely, no problem. Great, thank you for the input, Linda. Enjoy making bread. Get, get, uh, you know something. Get Nicholas working on it too. He will love it. Teach him how to make bread. <laughs> what a great idea. He likes to cook. I know that. 
So do it as something you can do together. It'll use up some time. All right, going back to uh, the grief thing. Jody says, get used to feeling comfortable with feeling awkward. Everything is a jumbled mess. All right, that's what she found out um, during what she had to do. Now, I understand that grief may involve extreme emotions and behavior. And it'll be things like guilt, anger, despair, you know, fear. Can you imagine what it was like for Lionel that not only did he hear that his daddy passed? Um, <laughs> I'm looking after you, Nicholas. <laughs> you tell mommy Sal said I can cook. And you, you know, she's going to learn, then she will teach you, or maybe you can both learn together. And then after that, Every week you can make bread for the family. Think about that, Nicholas. Maybe more than every week. <laughs> you look, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Make you feel good. Make me feel good to know you did it too. Hey, Nicholas, you send me a photograph. I would like to see your bread, please. All right, so going back to grief, we know that it, it's, you, you, you should expect your emotions to be heightened after you've heard this sort of sad news. Plus, you should expect anybody you're living with to have their emotions heightened. So, um, Jody, let me ask you, what do you and Lionel do about the fact that you know you're going to be a little bit over-emotional and short-tempered, maybe? <laughs> Linda's saying that, that Nicholas just said, okay, he says he will, Sal, and be sure he will remind me. <laughs> yeah, good, Nicholas. I'm so proud of you, honey. <laughs> you go ahead and do that. And then, you know, you can, you can learn how to make fancy breads, you know, with, with things in it. You can become the bread master and you can research it and everything. <sighs> so exciting. <laughs> I almost want to be in that house. How many of you going, hey, that's a good idea. I'm going to get start to become, uh, uh, learn how to make bread uh, just, just because I've got time. All right. So, uh, Jody, that's what I was wondering is I'm, as I know that you and Lionel both must be in heightened stages of uh, overload uh, with all the telephone calls and everything that you've had to make, you know, how do you balance it out? How do you warn each other that you've you know, crossed the boundary a bit here? Or how do you just be loving enough to know that this is just overload and just walk away from it? Be interesting to hear that. If somebody you know um, has lost somebody, um, you know, one of the things that we would really recommend is offer to help in practical ways. Uh, from my experience, you know, the number of people who just say, well, let me know if I can help you, um, it's become a socially acceptable thing to say. All right? So quite honestly, find out who means it. And, you know, the reason I say that is quite a few people will offer to help, but they don't really want to. You know who I mean. And so my attitude is, I hear you, Jane. Could I count on you for that? Or is it, I, I will understand if you're just being socially polite. That I totally get. But, and the other thing is, do let them help you. All right? But get them to help you in practical ways. Jody's saying, if you live nearby somebody who's got this going on in their lives, you know, drop off a meal. By the way, when I first arrived here, um, somebody did drop off a meal for me, which, uh, you know, when, when the moving happened. And I was so scared because, of course, the one question I had to ask is, does it have garlic in it? And I was so scared they were going to say yes. Um, because... You know, I'm allergic to garlic, and so I wouldn't have been able to eat it. So what happened was, luckily, they'd made an English um, steak and kidney pie, and they said, no, there's no garlic in it. And I went, yay, that is so wonderful. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Jody's saying that they can tell, you know, living in, in together, with grief going on in the household, we can tell by each other's body language. 
when we need quiet time to just be. And Judy's saying we give each other space and voice support, encourage communication. Yeah, don't, don't get snippy because they're snippy, all right? It is the grief that's talking, not who they are, and they will feel terrible. If you So if you live nearby, drop off a meal, offer to help with some laundry maybe. Hey, just you know, leave your laundry on the doorstep. I'll pick it up at 10 and I'll do it for you and, and return it. Um, offer to do the grocery shopping or babysit. Now, this is going to be a little bit more difficult as long as we're sheltered in place. But you get the idea generally. Simply asking, do you feel like talking? Now, I had a friend of mine who had a son who went down on spring break, if you like, to the east coast of Africa. And they were on a beach that I knew very well because I'd been there a number of times. Uh, it's very close to the um, Mozambique border. And the beach is about four hours away from any uh, <laughs> store or fresh water or whatever. And the whole group of these um, young people ran into the waves of the Indian Ocean. And I think five of them ran in and only four came out. And, you know, th this was so horrific for a, about a week because we kept hoping that, you know, he would, he made it but got dragged down to another part. But they found nothing, and they never did. Um, so we can only imagine that he got caught on a rock or something and never made it through. But the thing was that I want to tell you is that I was phoning her every day to see if she was all right. And I noticed then that that was not the right thing to do. Um, because what I noticed is she was less and less keen to talk to me. And even though my heart was in the right place, it was too much. And I can see that now in, you know, at, at being that much older. At the time, I was trying to be supportive, but the truth was it was too much. I would have been much better to just leave a note on her voicemail um, just to say, I'm sending you a hug and nothing, not asking them to, to, to be on the phone. So think about that. Imagine what it is like. And by the way, Maybe we are not as important in their lives as we think we are, but we still want them to know that we care. Offer to connect them to others going through a similar situation. You know, help them find um, grief counseling if they might need it. Or did you know that the local hospital has um, a, a weekly meeting for people who are in grief? Now, the problem again is that we are in... Um, social distancing. So maybe what we do is we help them find grief counseling online. You know, make a plan. Plan B is always important, right? They do say that people who are going through this um, suffer and will withdraw and avoidance. But also what we found out is that the people who care about them also go into avoidance. They're so scared of not having the right words to say. Right, But don't let that stop you. Better to have the wrong words than not to let them know you care. And so, as I said, send a hug if you have to, right? If that's all you can, because a hug, literally on a voicemail, hi, this is Sal, I just wanted, I know this is tough, I just want to send you a hug. Hi. And maybe you say, this is your daily hug from Sal. Hi. And, you know, you'll be amazed. You get the satisfaction of telling them that you care, and they don't have to talk about it. I think it's a really good gift myself. So here are some what to do and not to do when somebody is grieving. How about this famous one? Hang on one second. I want to see if I can... This one is, I know how you feel, because I've been through it. Well, hello, you don't know how they feel. Your experience can be totally different from their experience. 
However, I do believe that even though it's deeply personal, some of the things are common. For example, hey, I can't tell you I know how you feel, but I can tell you this. It will take time, but eventually the days will get easier. I wish I could tell you how long that takes because I can't because it's personal. But I can tell you that it does start to happen. It may not be soon, but it does start to happen. And then the days start to get easier. The other thing that I tell all people who are grieving is it is okay to still smile and laugh. You are not being disrespectful. I think it's a really important thing for grieving people to remember. Because for some reason we get this guilt thing, I'm not allowed to be happy. Well, I would like to say that I am pretty certain whoever passed would want you to be happy. And therefore, I think it is important that you carry on watching things that make you laugh. It's an emotion. Get the emotions out. By the way, I notice Netflix has got Gone with the Wind on it. You know, they've put that up for... Uh, the time when everybody's isolated. If you haven't seen Gone with the Wind, talk about an, uh, a movie full of emotions. It's a very long movie. It's a classic, and it has every emotion in it. You know, it's got love, hate, betrayal, uh, survival, you name it. It's got everything in it. And uh, I think it's a great movie to watch. Uh, if you If you haven't seen it, watch it. And if you have seen it, uh, I'm, de I'm definitely going to re-watch it because I have never watched that movie without coming out of that grateful for what I have. The other thing is that sometimes the bereaved are resistant to moving on because it can look like they're forgetting their loved ones. It's not true, all right? So getting on with your life is easier said than done. But as I've said, tell them there is hope. Right? Tell them that they will eventually be able to do that. Don't give them a timeline because they will have their own timeline on that. So the main thing is if you hear about somebody who is going through it, it's okay to say, I am so sorry to hear that because that is true. I'm pretty sure that's the truth. I am so sorry to hear that. I've always found telling the truth of, you know, I wish I had the right words for you, but I don't. Except I want to tell you I'm sending you a hug. You see, I think that is all true. I wish I had the right words for you, but I don't know what words they need to hear. So therefore, I'm sending you a hug. And, you know, you can send a hug every day by social media if you need to. All right, anybody got any input on that one, that from their personal experience, that you have had somebody pass in your life? Um, one of the things that um, Jody talked about, Jody, I know you've got these in here somewhere. Okay, so I asked Jody to give me some of her personal experience and feel free to add some of yours uh, if you are watching this or if you're watching it on the replay. She said, it is emotionally and physically exhausting to repeat that information time and time again. Right? So if you have somebody pass in your family, you know, be prepared to be you know, absolutely exhausted and people are going to ask for the same information. Jody, did you have it written out somewhere? So at least you got the key points that you didn't forget. I'm interested to hear that. She said, we needed to contact almost a dozen family members and they didn't have the current telephone numbers or email addresses for most of them. It took hours of searching to find the right numbers. So if you are lucky enough to know that somebody is in a situation like that, maybe you are prepared to help them before it happens. Maybe you are prepared to help them and start sussing out those names and addresses and everything before they need them so that you can say, hey, this is what we were doing for you while we were waiting. And here are the current, we've checked them all out. This is the current list for you. 
Wouldn't that be a nice thing to do for somebody? What a gift that would be. Um, the other thing she said was, we had to repeat the same information over and over to each one. The details we were being asked were sensitive. How long was he ill? How quickly did he decline? Was he in pain? And what are the funeral arrangements? So, um, so those are things that I think Jody and Jody saying, yes, I made a note of the details. I think that is human nature, all right? They want to show caring, so they say, oh no, how long was he ill? All right? And there's something almost ghoulish about, you know, did he go down quickly and was he in pain? But it is what people ask. So be prepared to hear it. And of course, they will want to know about the funeral arrangements or, you know, where to send flowers or whatever. You know? So think about that. Be prepared. It'll make it easier. Jody's saying, make sure families keep their contact information updated every year. Yeah, right, Jody. All right, so that's interesting. Jody said that when her mother-in-law phoned her, you know, and asked her to, to phone people and so forth, she kept notes so she didn't have to ask her to repeat the emotional details. Yes, so you know, take notes as they're talking to you, if somebody's asking you to do it for them. Um, now, Jody's saying, you know, make sure the, how many of you are going, that's control. There is no way you're going to make sure that your family keeps their contact information updated. However, if you are that person in your family that thinks it's necessary, then maybe you can send out an annual, hi, everybody, I just want to update that I've got everybody's correct information. Has anybody moved, changed their telephone number or their email you know, in the, you know, whatever, and see who comes back. You know, you can do it with a survey on Facebook or you can do it with a survey wherever you like. Um, so, Jody, I don't think we can guarantee everybody in the family will do it, but I think one person in the family can, the one that is organized like that. By the way, if ever I you know want to update something, I will ask my sister, right? She because she will have it updated more than I will. The other thing is, uh, I really recommend this. Um, she's saying, ask a few close friends to be points of contact and tell the others uh, on your friend list. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law had over two hundred people to notify, and they were so exhausted she was ill. That is what I really recommend that you do, okay? So this is the immediate family, but now you've got, say you've got six, five siblings, all right? Then you say to this sibling, could you make sure that you contact the most responsible person in your families, yeah, because you may be husband and wife, and make sure that they get the most responsible person to tell everybody down the line. And let me know that they've done it. Now, let me know when they've done it because you need to be able to feed back to this center person, the mother-in-law, for example, in this case, that, it, that you not only contacted John, but John contacted all his, both sides of his family for you. And that's how I would word it. For you, not for me, for you, all right? And so just keep getting people, you know, maybe this goes down a third generation, all right? But I, I think if you ask people, when they say, what can I do to help? Which is one of the standard questions, Jody. all right? What you can do to help is to contact the most responsible person in your line, the families, and make sure that they contact everybody else and feedback to you that they have done it in their family so that you don't have to keep following it up. Make sense? Jody said, I was in shock how many numbers we didn't have. Yes, I, I want to tell you, 
I, I'm pretty shocked about that as well. And the other thing Jody said is know what insurance policies are in place. Can you give us some, for instances, a life insurance policy, maybe? Um, maybe a funeral insurance policy? What else would you have wanted to know? And just to let you know what we're going to move on to, I, I hope that you all understand this isn't about being negative or or a downer. This is like we all need to know this stuff. We need to be prepared for it. You don't want to be like Jody and Lionel and find out that, that they were responsible for contacting all these people and then didn't have any of the numbers or emails or anything. Yeah, Jody's saying the feedback is critical, that you can say to the mother-in-law or whoever, hey, I am John, John just contacted me today and said, don't worry, he's let everybody in his family know. Now, some people will still say that they didn't know. It happens. You know, and so I would say that in reality. Hey, he said that he's let everybody know, but there is a possibility that somebody is still not going to know. It just is human nature. And so be, yeah, make sure the person uh, is ready for that. And just hold on one second, because somewhere here I have got. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit now about be prepared to be ripped off and to get scam calls. Be prepared. Um, some of you know our, our viewer, Kimmy, who was busy looking after her husband uh, who'd had heart surgery and was now in rehab. Uh, and she had to, and she was in a different town, and she had to go home uh, to go and get checked out. And when she, because she was sick, and when she got home, um, they said they needed to test her for the virus and that it would cost her $1,900. Well, luckily, she put that up on, um, in a way that I got to read that, and she sent it to me. And I said, that is, insane but hang on i will send my number one detective out to check on that now my number one detective happens to be jody who is in the first week of growing and grieving why would i ask jody to even look at that when she is in grieving well jody probably is smiling at me right now because jody will tell you one of the most important things when you are grieving is as far as possible live a normal life. So I'm going, if I go and do this, first of all, I'm in the wrong country. Uh, you know, I'm in Canada, not in the States. But not only that, I would be taking away the pleasure that I know Jody gets out of being a detective. It is what gives her pleasure. So Jody, sure enough, went off and researched what was available. And we found out no way should Kimmy be charged for that test. And being Jody, she actually had the correct page from the government website and whatever. Um, you know, it, it was like, <laughs> you know, this is what you need. And if anybody gives you any trouble, show them this. Uh, so we you know, sent her screen grabs uh, so she could pass them on. And then if necessary, get hold of the Department of Health, you know. And so we gave her all her options. Well done, Jody. Great work as usual. And just Jody's just feeding me back on that insurance policy. Any insurance policies at all, please keep all contacts in a folder. We weren't even sure that there were any insurances in place. It took some searching. Right. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I, on a constant basis, have uh, somebody who knows all that information. My person is Yvonne. In the event anything happens to me, Yvonne knows who to contact, primary, not 
all the way down the line, primary, who to contact, and where my stuff is. All right? All right. So, so just be aware of that. Have at least one, if not two people, uh, fully apprised, as they say, you know, fully informed as to where those things are. By the way, I actually have two different people as power of attorney on my life. In other words, if I suddenly uh, was in a critical situation and I couldn't make decisions about my own health or my own life, I have two people. One is my lawyer and the other is Yvonne, that they could, they can literally make decisions on my behalf. All right, so I just want you to think about that one as well. All right, so Kimmy, uh, the, her story about being told this test is, they took did the test, but then they said they were going to send her a bill for 1900 bucks. Um, <laughs> you know, Jody's saying she was so angry. There were no words to how angry actually I was as well, Jody, because you know it was just like insane. Uh, the fact that they would even pressure her to pay the bill, you know, this was like, it's really important. And Jody is saying, important information, our dear mama saw family will not be victim to a scam if we can help it. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. You can hear that Jody really feels that one. I was, I must admit, I was pretty horrified. <laughs> you know, and I was just like, now, what are the scams? All right, this is the thing to be careful of. Your bank will not ask for any of your critical information over the phone. All right? They may ask you, um, what? They may ask you for one piece of information. In other words, my bank has one piece of information that only my bank has, all right, which is the login to my account. Um, I, I've got a special password. Only the bank has that one. And if anybody ever asks me for that, even if they say it's my bank, I will say, okay, um, I'll phone you back on that. And I will put the phone down. I won't ask for their number because they can give me a bogus number and answer it as my bank. I will put the phone down. I will phone my bank and say, has anybody in your system tried to contact me with this information? By the way, I have had it happen three times where scammers were asking for that information. And they said, uh, good fear for checking. And I said, well, I don't hand out that piece of information. <laughs> Only you have it and uh, nobody else has it. Therefore, I'm not going to tell anybody over the phone. Or what I will do, um, is I will to check, and I say I will say to them, I know that you already have that thing. Uh, give me the third letter. <laughs> and they go, what? I said, give me the third letter. I know what the word is. Just give me the third letter. All right, and that normally shuts them up pretty well. So be aware of scammers. What are the scammers? Anybody that is asking for any of your personal information, be prepared not to give it over the phone. Please protect yourself. Do not give your critical information over the phone. Make sure that you say, oh, sorry, I can't continue this conversation right now. I've just got an emergency here. I'll call you back. And if they try to give you a number, say, don't worry, I'll call the branch. Put the phone down. All right. And then call for further information. As I said, I've stopped three scammers doing that. By the way, they all sounded very plausible. You know, they 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 had sounded very professional, they sounded very knowledgeable and all the rest of it. But, you know, the truth is, it isn't like the, hello, I'm from Microsoft thing, you know, with an accent that you couldn't understand. No, this wasn't as, as like that. This was like they had somebody, you know, who was really sounded like they could be a bank person. I still won't trust it. I'm sorry. It's too important to me now. So what are the scams? Anybody know of any scams that are going around so that we can share them, the knowledge with people? 
by the way, don't ever. Um, I, I I had God help me on something yesterday. I really. <laughs> um, when I say that, because you know, I got I got a bill that came through somehow on my account for my um, television, yeah, my internet provider which is also my television. And I suddenly got a bill for a thousand bucks that I wasn't expecting. And it included my modems that I bought with me. And it was really strange because I'm thinking, yikes. So suddenly get hit with paying for three modems that they say I've got. I know I've got two, but I don't know where the third one is. But anyway, you know what I just said? I said, I don't want the drama. I've got enough drama going on at the moment. Let me just pay the bill and move on. But then, <laughs> but then God looked after me. Why? I put it onto what I thought was the wrong account. So suddenly I got my bill came to me and the bill was a thousand bucks plus in credit. And I'm going, no, 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 it should have gone onto the other bill. So now I'm onto my internet provider and I said, hey guys, um, I had this house, I bought a new one. I got a bill from this house location for this amount, but I accidentally paid. That's what I thought I'd done. Accidentally paid on the new bill. So I'm a bozo, but can you help me by transferring this money into the other one? And they listened to me very nicely. And then they said, hold on a second. I'd like to check that out. It sounds wrong. And I went, okay. So they checked it out and said, no. You now have just the one account, and it includes everything from the previous one. Your account stayed with you when you moved. So I did pay the right account. It was my current one. <laughs> and they said, we didn't send you that invoice, or we have no record of sending you that invoice. Interesting, right? They had no record of sending me that invoice. Now, do you think I dreamt it? No. I saw that come through somewhere on my mail, but I just really couldn't be bothered to go. Um, okay, hold on one second. Jody just sent me a message and I didn't get to it in time. Let me just see what she said. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jody. Jody's reminded me that she dropped in a text scam at the end here. Okay, let me have a look here. No, it must be somewhere else, Jody. I only have up to slide 38. So can you tell me what slide number it is and I will find it? Oh, wait a minute, let me see here. Okay, I think I found it. Is it a, a screenshot, um, Jody? Yeah, okay, so somebody received, just, just this is a typical scam. This one was done by text message and it says, Anna, in other words, it uses your name, $1,000 to help you pass the outbreak has been pre-accepted. Claim it by clicking on here. You know, and then they're gonna ask for your bank information so they can deposit it directly into your bank. Thanks, Jody, a good one. Yeah, so anything like that, just, if it sounds too good to be true, it is, you know, double check it, all right? Just double check it. I want you to be overly prepared to be scammed. I want you to be on high alert for scammers. The same thing, by the way, I, I cannot tell you how many people write to me and ask me to uh, take part in their GoFundMe type uh, things. I have a, a pretty solid boundary. It's not whether I know this person as a viewer. It is, is this person a regular viewer that my regular viewers would care about? If so, I will talk about it or I will, uh, you know, throw money at it. I must admit, the only thing that I did throw money at was the uh, the wild 
the wildlife preservation thing for the koalas in Australia when the fires were there. I did check out their legitimacy uh, on the good givers list type thing. And I found out that it was a perfectly legitimate organization. And then I sussed out the real um, website for that organization by you know, back checking stuff. And then I donated because to me that was important. So, for example, you know, I might donate to some viewer that you've never heard of because they were a solid viewer maybe when I first started. And I would donate to them to this day. Why? I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't had their support way back when. So, you know, to me, it's, you know, certain things I, I read. But I'm amazed how many, for example, you all know that I donate time to help with uh, Dan Semba, with Benji and Judy's big um, annual fundraiser. I'm amazed how many of their viewers who, you know, are part of that group will write to me and ask me to donate stuff to them. And I'm going, I don't know them. Yeah, I really don't know them. Therefore, I, I won't do it. The same way as I will not, you know, you'll be amazed how many people write to me to get messages to Benji and Judy, and I won't. I, I made it. Mind you, that's not 100% true. If Jody asked me to get a message to Benji and Judy about something, I probably would tell them, right? Um, because they know about... <laughs> because they know about uh, Jody, because I talk about her a lot. But, you know, it's just like I would not pass on messages. If I did it for one, I'd need to do it for millions. Why would I do that to myself? Okay. Thank you, Jody. If you get one of these texts, block the number and then delete the message. Do not click the link. Are you ready? Okay. So that was the Anna one we know about. Um, I can't put that up. Hang on a second. Cash uh, ASAP. Right, if you see something that starts with cash ASAP, don't click on it. All right, I already talked about that one, right? I just didn't give you the link. All right, so I know that Jody's going to be pushing for me to do the... <laughs> countdown. So let me get there ahead of her. That'll save her having to bug me, which normally comes about now. I hear rain. And while I'm doing this, you know, if you've got any achievements that you have done this week, right, what are you proud of? You've been at home. Um, you've been at home and you've sheltered in place. What have you got done? I'm amazed how many people are telling me they're going stir crazy and I'm going, I'm busier than ever. <laughs> I've got a different mentality, maybe. Okay, Valentine's Day is 10 months and 23 days away, people. Christmas, 272 days away. By the way, let's have fun Christmas presents. <laughs> Jody just sent me the reminder I'm already doing it. <laughs> Uh, 272 days for Christmas lists and presents, people. And you've got eight months and nine days to actually um, get those cards in the mail to overseas. The U.S. Thanksgiving is eight months and four days away. Canadian Thanksgiving is six months and 19 days away. Because we have ours earlier. We have ours in October. For those of you in the U.S., you probably know that your taxes do not need to be done for another three months now. They've, they've delayed that. Uh, in Canada, they've delayed it for another two months. So that's good. I need that time. <laughs> Summer is 84 days away, which means if you're south of the equator, winter is only 84 days away. So start being prepared for your next season. By the way, I've got a little thing in my life. Do you have certain things where you go... If it is spring, it is time for me to da 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 da. da. Uh, time to change the filter on my curry. And by the way, do you know you can recycle those, uh, reuse those filters if you know what to do? How many of you have got a curry type machine? 
What you do is you take the old filter out, you let it dry completely, all right? Then once it's dry completely, you put it in the microwave. I think it's for two minutes. I'd have to research that again, but I think it's for about two minutes to kill off any remaining bugs. Might be more than two minutes. I'd have to look. Anyway, and then you can reuse it. <laughs> Save you a lot of money. All right, so summer. And I am busy. Uh, it was really exciting to me. I, I actually made a worm farm yesterday. I'm going to talk to you about it. I've got a video of that. Easter is just 15 days away. For those of you who have been doing the Lent thing, uh, you've only got 15 more days to go. So I would, just one last thing for me, which is, can you believe that I moved two months and 15 days ago? Nearly a whole season now. Isn't that amazing? It seems, by the way, um, I am amazed how far I'm getting in the craft room. I now have one area in that big, you know, I had that big stack of boxes that went up to eye level. I now have one section there that is bare floor. So I'm going to remove all, reposition all the boxes and put them into a new stack to, to open up more space. Uh, I'm really quite excited. Uh, I, I did that yesterday. I got all the way down to the floor and one section of it. And you'll be surprised to hear that I even took the time to go into the shed. And in my shed, I've got two rows of boxes on my left. And the stuff on the right, I can pretty well see what is there. But the stuff on the left is two depths. All right, one box and then another box behind it. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to start looking at the back boxes. And by the way, opening up to make sure what it says is in it is really in it, because I got caught with that before. Um, and then what I will do is on the front box, I will put front box, this, 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 and this, back box, this, that. So now I'm going to know exactly what is behind the boxes as well. And, you know, it doesn't take as long as you think. The other thing is I notice I've got about six or eight boxes filled with books. Now, that's going to be strength training, uh, filled with books that really don't need to be there. Um, I'm going to wrap those in plastic and put them in a sheltered area between my shed and my house. Yeah, it's pretty sheltered there, but I'm still going to wrap them in plastic and, um, you know, just get them out of that shed so I can organize the shed. That's what I'm trying to do is to get in there and start organizing it. A lot of it will stay in the boxes where they are, but I just need to know where is everything. And for example, I have started one new box called woodworking. So anything to do with my woodworking will go in there. Hi there, Beth. Good to hear you. And uh, we hope you are well. <laughs> You've done a great job, Beth. I, I just listen to what you're up to and I just you know, roll my eyes. So Jody is saying, I would like to thank you all, especially Sal, okay, for this sense of community and family. We are blessed with every week. We are strong together. I appreciate and value each of you. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jody. And, you know, that's why I want to make sure that I keep putting out these are you prepared type videos just so that people can think about that. If you are prepared, you won't be scared. All right. You know, um, literally. There was, you know, there were a couple of things that came to my mind as I was doing this cast, right? The powdered eggs was one, um, and whatever it was that Jody added was another. Where you go, sometimes just talking about it helps you clear up in your mind what you need to do. And I don't know, but Jody, 
you would know because you study this stuff to such a degree, and that is, are powdered eggs um, better for you than real eggs? You know, in terms of, or Beth would know as well because Beth's really good at knowing these things. Um, you know, oh, and um, Isabel is another one. Um, you know, powdered eggs is is are they healthier or not healthy? What about we didn't talk about that. What about, uh, I'm pretty sure that cheese in a jar is all, pro right? It's not real cheese. Hmm. Part of me goes, is this processed cheese? Maybe, but at least it's got wax all over it, so we know it's going to last. We're going to learn lots more, hopefully. <laughs> Now, remember, if there's anything else that we can be covering that you would like me to put my spin on, you know, just let us know. Um, I really would like to know. Beth saying, I helped a customer find a bra to make it into a face mask along with sewing stuff. Well, you know something that there was, you know, Beth, I saw a, a, a cartoon about that where they were using a bra as a face mask. Um, but, you know, I, I think that I will probably do the same because that's got a lot of layers on it. You know, um, my bras are, you know, underwire and supported, you know, and I'm going, that's a lot of layers for the you know, virus to get through. I probably won't be able to breathe very well. You know, Beth, one of the questions I asked, you know, I have a CPAP machine that helps me breathe at night, and I'm thinking that's a ventilator. And, you know, it was funny because I asked Jody, and Jody was telling me um, no. And Jody, just tell me again, why is it that a CPAP machine doesn't, something about the virus getting atomized or something. Um, but, you know, it, it was interesting to me. If I was having difficulty breathing, I think I would be ramping up my CPAP machine to help me. I don't care if it isn't the perfect thing. I'll get Jody to explain that to me better. Okay, it was considered, but will errors the virus. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to do some research into why. <laughs> I'm still, if I've already got the virus. Hmm. I'm, I'm not quite sure why. Anyway. It's, it's good to know. I think, Jody, though, I have to say this, that at a pinch, if I couldn't get a hospital, if they, you know, weren't enough ventilators or whatever, I'd probably still use it. I have to say that. <laughs> but then that's me. <laughs> um, all right. So let us know what it is we can help you with. Uh, what it, I definitely... The mask respirates the particles. It's communicable. So you're saying that when I breathe out, it's going to be pushing the virus out. That I get, but if I'm at home, hang on a second, if I'm at home on my own, and I can't, I'm not allowed into hospital because I'm not sick enough. Does that matter to me? I think I understand what you're saying now, Jody. But you understand what I'm saying? If I'm in my home, you know, and the germs are staying in my home. Yeah, I, I didn't mean for hospital use. I'm saying for my own use. Yeah, I bet you the respirator, the, um, did you see that Dyson? has already made one. How about that for smart? They have already designed one and made one and um, and marketing it. 
respirators. They've, they've, they've done the first run of, I think they're doing a first run of 10,000 for the Brits because Dyson comes from uh, England. And then they've got another 5,000 that they're making to send overseas internationally. But that's what you call a really smart company that was, as soon as they heard there was a shortage, they took their talent and they did it. <laughs> Jody's going, it's okay for you to use it for your private use. You're fine, but please don't need it. <laughs> I told you, yeah, I totally get that. But Jody, I don't know about you, but that made me feel a bit more comfortable to know that I actually do have something that will help me breathe if necessary. Um, you know, I, I don't want it either, honey. <laughs> I, but you know, I'm trying to be prepared, Jody. I'm trying to think of all the what ifs, all right? Because that is who I am. I like to be ahead of the game. <laughs> By the way, the fun factoid at the end here: um, the Judy Judy put the girls onto Facebook this week uh, so that they could talk to their friends, and <laughs> I must be on their friends list because they keep waking me up <laughs> with messages telling me that they love me. <laughs> and it is the cutest thing. And this morning, Juliana sent me a picture. I, I asked her to send me pictures of what she's drawing because, you know, we have that in common. And she sent me this gorgeous picture this morning. And then what I said is, you know, ask the twins to send me their pictures as well, but after three o'clock <laughs> this afternoon. And I had a little word with mommy. <laughs> and I said to mommy, could you just try and, and get the children to understand that Mama Sal doesn't go to bed much before sometime about three or maybe five in the morning. I didn't get to bed until five the other morning. Didn't get to sleep until five. I got hair dropping all over me. And, you know, that's when they started sending me messages at nine, which normally would be a, a perfectly normal time. But, okay, seriously, I got a hair. There it is. I still got a hair. Anyway, it, you know, it, it was a perfectly normal time for most people, but it wasn't for me. <laughs> So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to remember that every day I need to send them messages to let them know it's okay time. They can send me messages now. Um, I think that would be the clever thing. But it was so cute. And I am just so blessed that they they wanted to send me messages of love. I think that that was just adorable. <laughs> so I'm going to send back some messages of love this afternoon. All right, so hope this has been helpful to you all. And um, if it is, please leave a comment below. I want to know that doing this sort of stuff is making you go, oh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. And makes you feel more prepared and therefore less stressed. Please let me know if it's helping you so that we can know to do more. This is Dear Mama Sal saying thank you for your time. Thank you for your kindness and thank you for caring about one another. It's really, really important, more so now than ever. And we really appreciate it. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, as usual, look after one another because that's what you do. But most of all, please, please, please remember to look after yourself because you are the most important person you know. Bye-bye for now.